Well, we won. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Um, I just had a very gracious call from Mayor Pico and uh, and just delighted to be here. There are so many people to thank. Um, we're going to see what happens on the national races, but um, the this is uh, it's feeling good. Yeah. Um, I have. There are, there are so many people to thank, and I'm and I'm told if I start naming people, I'll forget somebody and I'll cause trouble. So the so the you know who you are, all the volunteers, the those of you who wrote op eds, who knocked doors, who delivered food to our office, um, the campaign staff, the official staff. The one name check. Big thanks to Joe Riley at the Laborers for opening up your hall for us this evening. Um, little. Little fun fact, um, summer of 19, 1990, um, I was a, got a yellow hard hat from Local 66 in Nassau County, Long Island. Um, <laughs> I occasionally still get notes that the laborers have, I think, $2.60 in my pension if I ever want to go. <laughs> But, uh, but a long connection with the laborers, and I appreciate it. And, and most of all, um, thank you to Karen and Audrey. Um, this has been a really, really hard five months. Um, the last time that we had a, you know, the last time I won an election, we did it in a drive through um, The last time I did an election in a room this big, um, Gwen was up here with us. I have a picture on my desk of all of us sitting in that moment, and it's just such joy on our face. And it is so, it's so hard not to have her here. And I'm so lucky to have you too. Um, this has also been a hard, a hard cycle for political reasons. Some of you have heard this story, but Jim Clyburn has this theory that when parties lose their base, <clears throat> They pivot back in the next, they lose an election, they come back and they win their base, and you go from there. But when parties lose the middle, the other party takes the middle. And <laughs> what remains of that party that has lost the middle can only survive if it continues to double down on its base and become ever more radicalized. And Jim told me that story three years ago. That was before the 2020 cycle that brought the QAnon caucus into Congress. That was before the majority, the majority of the Republicans in the House voted to overturn the results of a free and fair election. That was before an insurrection. That was before it became partisan to say that, to decry an attack on Paul Pelosi, right? Clyburn was right. Um, and frankly, it's come, it's come back here as well as we've seen, where the, you know, the mainstream of the Republican Party is now trying to bend that arc of history backwards and away from justice, from, from taking away these rights and norms that we, we took for granted, from women's right to choose to the LGBT community's right to be themselves. And for too much of this election, when I wanted to be making a case to people to vote, I was putting out fires that had been lit throughout our community jeopardizing public safety by people who are just trying to radicalize a base. I'm not saying that to be partisan, I'm saying that because it's true, right? And part of why it feels so good to have won tonight is because I needed that reminder, as Elijah Cummings always used to tell us, that we are better than this, right? Because the, the, demise, the demise of a once great political party is not synonymous with the demise of America. We're still pretty great people. We're still a pretty great country. We are still the place that Thomas Paine described by saying our citizenship in any particular state is only our local distinction, but our great title is as Americans. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to remember that. Because tonight is not a night to dunk on the other team. It's not a night to conclude that some parts of our community are good and other parts are irredeemable. It's a night to reflect on how tonight happened. So on a personal level, I can't stand here tonight without Gwen and Audrey. We've spent the last five months doing our best to be each other's rocks, to give stability when we could and space when we couldn't, 
doing our best to remind ourselves as much as we could by reminding each other that life is fleeting and we had better make the most of the time that we have together. Because when the sadness and the fear and the pain finally washes away, the only thing that's left is love. So let's all do everything we can to shore that up. First with each other, and then by expanding that circle of love, because that's where you find the hope. And, and look, we weren't the only family to face tragedy this year. Lots of folks in this room, lots of folks in our community lost loved ones to COVID, physically lost loved ones. Lots of folks emotionally lost loved ones um, to political nihilism, for lack of a better word. But we won tonight because when you all faced that loss, you found ways to expand your own circle of love. Right? You, you isolated with your family during COVID, and then, and then you gradually expanded as COVID retreated. Sometimes with joy, sometimes with a little bit of hesitation, but always with the confidence that there is a greater unum that unites our pluribus, that we is better than me, and that there is no growth without risk. <clears throat> Alexis de Tocqueville, he famously said that in democratic societies, as opposed to aristocratic societies. All citizens are independent and weak. They can do almost nothing by themselves. Therefore, they all fall into impotence if they do not learn to aid each other freely. You didn't fall into impotence. You didn't give up hope. You didn't agonize, you organized, as our speaker <laughs> likes to say. First with your neighbors, then with your blocks, then with your towns. Every one of you who at some point during this campaign knocked on a stranger's door, dialed a stranger's phone, you were doing what we're hardwired to do as social creatures, right? You made friends, you listened without judgment, you persuaded with respect, you were physically and psychically present in other people's lives, which is all that we have. Because any one of us in this room might not wake up tomorrow. And that is just as true for folks in another room that's a lot like this one that was hoping to have balloons come down tonight where they didn't vote for me. <clears throat> and they might not have voted the same way that you all did, but they're still good people. And for us to make the most of our potential, we have to live in a world where they can make the most of theirs too. And look, I get it. None of us are perfect. And when I see a guy walking down the street in a MAGA hat, my first instinct is not to go up and give him a hug. <laughs> I, I, am, I am no John Lewis. And don't take this personally, none of us in this room are John Lewis. But at least not individually, but collectively, <clears throat> we all led with love more often than we didn't. Right? So, so my, my ask of you all tonight is really, really simple. Just don't stop. Because the work of rebuilding our country and restoring decency and trust of leading with love, none of that ends with tonight's election. You should be proud of what you've done tonight. But now take that pride and build it into something bigger. Run for something. You know, we're, we're, just a, we're just a couple short months away from municipal elections. There are school boards and village councils that, that need you to jump in and run in those races and bring that love for the club forward. Build, build something non-political in your own community that expands that circle of love. Bake a pie for your neighbor who had a weird sign that you didn't like in their yard, right? Because that's what you did before COVID, that's what you did before Trump, right? You know they're good people, right? Model the behavior that you expect from them, even if they're not capable of giving it back yet. Because here's the thing. The overwhelming majority of Americans agree with everybody in this room on all the things that really matter. That guy on your street who voted for Trump, if you ask him, he'll tell you that he also thinks that America is an idea worth defending. I bet you he'll also tell you that he agrees that the good guys won the Civil War, that the Enlightenment was a step forward in human progress, that Russian foreign policy should not be synonymous with U.S. foreign policy, that he wants to go to a July 4th parade and not get shot that we're at our best when we're a country where the best and brightest want to come because they can live up to their full potential here like they can't anywhere else in the world. That the golden rule is a pretty good rule to live by. 